Hey y'all, I'm Carolina Tony. Today the road brings us to the Stagville Plantation near Durham, North Carolina. There is a lot of history here and we're going to share that history with you. And we'll even, we are even going on a tour. And we'll get started right after this station identification. Today, Historic Stagville is a 165-acre state historic site. Stagville is one of the few plantation sites in the United States that focuses on the lives, culture, and labors of enslaved African Americans. Through careful research, this site documents the history of enslaved people and their descendants on the Benihan and Cameron plantations. These stones are all that remain of the Benihan kitchen building. Carpenter construction of other outbuildings at the same time included a smokehouse, a milk house, a lumber house, and a two one and two one room log houses for the enslaved families. In the 19th century, it doesn't matter how much money you had when you lived on a plantation, when you lived in a log home, you went to the woods or you went to an outhouse. And this is a working outhouse. Check it out. They've nailed it shut because you know if it wasn't, you know what people would do. Well, here is a whale. No running water in those days. But look, you can actually see the water down in it. Archaeologists believe these stones are the foundation of an enslaved family's house. Built around 1920, this 19 by 23 foot structure likely replaced an earlier 18th century slave dwelling on the spot. The cabin had a wooden plank floor, a wood shingle roof dry laid stone foundation and a stone fireplace. At least one other slave dwelling stood nearby. Sometime after 1880 the family added a porch with a rock pier foundation that extended from the eastern side of the structure. A family of five to seven people shared this one room structure located near the Benenheim house. This dwelling was part of the domestic slave quarters. Enslaved coachmen, stewards, waiters, housekeepers, valets, ladies maid, nurses, seamstresses, laundresses, kitchen assistants, and others lived in this area while the field laborers and craftsmen lived farther away. Enslaved people who worked within the slave holder homes might have had access to better food or clothing than most, but their lives were no less arduous. In addition to the daily work, people here were always on call for the white family, day or night, while most other work around the plantation stopped at sunset. Other enslaved people had Sundays and Christmas week off, but work continued in the house. Forced to live close to the plantation owners, this family had little privacy and could be interrupted at any moment by demands or desires of the Benihines. Enslaved people working near the white families were also most vulnerable to emotional, sexual, or physical abuse. This is this tree, look at the thorns on it. It's called a thorn locust. Wow, I would not crawl up that tree. As we look around this house at all these trees, in the 19th century, these trees wouldn't have been here. It would have been open farmland as far as you can see. So you can see a whole lot can happen in 200 years.
bricks on this chimney were handmade and there are fingerprints for instance right here there's a fingerprint and here's another one a fingerprint right there and this fingerprint would have been the fingerprint of an enslaved person here on this plantation that made the bricks for this chimney here's another brick look right here here and here and here it's where while the brick was still soft that's where he grabbed it with his hand how's that for leaving your mark on history so this is a building that we call the great barn um, there were of course many barns and stables built all across this plantation but this building was constructed in 1860 and this building was said to be um, the largest barn that had ever been built in this part of North Carolina at the time. This building was built under the orders of Paul Cameron, one of the Cameron siblings that owned this plantation at the time. And he boasted about the incredible size and grandeur of this building in letters to his family. It was intended to be a stable, so there would have been stalls here probably on this first floor and there would have been animals like mules and working horses stabled here overhead upstairs there were huge lofts there were the lower lofts on either side of the building and then the floor that you can see here over the door would have run all the way across the top story and that would have been you know this huge hayloft for storage overhead in the summer of 1860 paul cameron ordered enslaved carpenters to build this great barn which was completed by the end of the year it was one of the largest in the state at the onset of the Civil War, 133 feet by 33 feet. The size of the barn is evidence of the wealth and expansion of the plantation. The impressive three-story structure also demonstrates that there were many highly skilled carpenters and craftsmen among the enslaved people of Stagville. The barn's queen trusses, scarf joints, and intricate framing are typical in a structure this large. This barn was the great pride for Paul Cameron, as is revealed in his September 28, 1860 letter to his father-in-law, Thomas Ruffin. I have a great wish to show you the best stables ever built, covered with cypress shingles at the cost of $6 per thousand. The barn was the largest major structure built at Stagville by enslaved people, and it represents the height of the plantation's expansion on the eve of the Civil War. This barn, this huge barn, was built in the 1860s, shortly before the uh, war between the states. A lot of, of course, it was slave labor that built this barn one of the owners of this plantation paul cameron after the war was over and during reconstruction he made a big speech uh, in raleigh before a lot of his fellow men and he basically said that if all the slaves were done away with and just a race from the from North Carolina that there would not be one thing left that was anything to remember them by any monuments or anything well I think this plantation itself is a testament that he was wrong the workmanship in this building still standing today is a testament of the contribution that these African Americans made to the building of this country and also the building of this plantation as well as some of the other homes and buildings on this property. A 
of course these were the slave cabins so they're called later they became sharecropper cabins up until the 20th century in fact this is an old road right in front of the cabins this is a very old cabin here we do believe this is a smokehouse a real short door a lot of smokehouses would have little doors that you could get in but if you'll look up on the top of the building it's a whole smokestack a lot of these cabins are from different periods these would have been probably some of the oldest where these clapboards and uh, wooden shingles would have been a little newer nonetheless still very old this area is known as Horton Grove, named for William Horton, a white farmer who occupied the pre-Revolutionary War house south of here. This land became the site of slave quarters after the Horton sold it to the Cameron family. The Horton Grove houses are the only preserved slave quarters remaining from the Cameron plantations. Built in 1851, these four structures each hosted, each housed four families. Most of the people living here labored in the surrounding fields while others worked in trade shops and nearby mills. While most slave dwellings were one-story structures with dirt floor and crude fireplaces, the Horton Grove houses featured heavy timber framing, stone foundations with raised wooden floors, and sturdy brick chimneys. Well, I hope you have enjoyed our video here at the Stagville Plantation. Uh, I've learned a lot today, and I hope you did too. <laughs> a lot of folks will make rude comments on this video, I know. But when we study history, we have to understand that slavery was something that was there. It was the, it was the economy of the United States. Uh, it was how things were. But I think the most fascinating thing about it is how resilient that the people that were enslaved, how they pushed through it, how they got where they are today. Uh, the buildings that are still standing that were built by enslaved people, I think that is amazing. And that's a part of history that we need to remember because if it wasn't for these people, we wouldn't be here today. Well. As I've said before, Patrick Henry said, unless we study the past, we are doomed to repeat it. So I think it's very important that we study the past. Again, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a big old thumbs up. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. But until next time, y'all have a good day.